Welcome back aboard Arabella. Behind the scenes here, Steve and Robin have been making the trip back to Granby quite a bit this month to help with a new round of cancer treatment for his mom. It seemed rare to have time on the boat that coincides with good enough weather to work outside, but a window of a couple days opened up and it let Steve finally rig the reefing system and downhauls for the main and mizzen sails. But first, Steve installed another of the restored latches from Victoria up forward under the berth. Weather for Harwichport. Windy. Windy, windy, windy. So I'm getting everything laid out here to try to get some work done on deck. We actually have some somewhat decent weather. It is sunny out. Look at that. Oh, it's actually sunny. Um, but it's still really, really windy. So I'm going to do what we can here. These cheek blocks and the cleats are for the reef points on the main and the mizzen. So the line will go through the cheek block and then get snugged up on the cleat. But I need a little flat spot for the back of the cleat and a even bigger flatter spot for the back of the cheek block. And when I make that flat spot on the booms, I want to put some paint on it. And I can't do that until it warms up a little bit. And the location of these cheek blocks is really, really important. And Robbie sent me the dimensions where they should be, um, but I just want to physically pull the sail to that point and double check that and make sure that I didn't make an error somewhere in the measurement or the transcribing of it. Then the rest of the hardware here is for the downhaul Cunningham, so 
this pad eye and this cleat will be for the reef lines. This block and tackle and this pad eye will be for cinching down, pulling down on that sail, jam cleat to lock things off. These cleats I'm going to put in the stern on either side of the cockpit just to help manage all the different lines that come back to give another another option for things and lines to rig some of this stuff with. Impact driver, whole bunch of drill bits, bit and brace, a napping Akiva. You don't see that very often. Uh, so yeah, I think these are going to have to wait till tomorrow because I want to hoist the sail and get those reef points kind of pulled and just double check these cheek block locations. And I can't do that when it's super windy out. But I can work on installing this hardware and getting the lines rigged. And it's not too terribly brutally cold out, so it should not be an atrocious task. And if you count here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different size and length fasteners for this. And thankfully, I had all of those tucked behind the settee in my fastener locker. So eventually, I won't need to carry around all of these. But for now, while we're finishing this up, it's, uh, it's been really handy to be able to just paw in there and grab everything we need, because we do need quite a wide variety. Yesterday I started working on these attachment points for the reefing system. So I need to create a couple flat spots on the mast and these are roughed in. I need to take these off, clean it up, flatten it out a little more, put some varnish on there. But I don't have the varnish, it's in Granby. We're heading back there today. So I'll bring that back uh, and I can do that fine a little bit. But I wanted to just kind of start to figure these out and get a little something done. So there's three reefs in the main, and what a reef does is essentially shortens the sail. So when the wind is heavy, you, know, you need less sail. And we're working on the permanent solution for that. Well, the sail's up. Hopefully the wind doesn't get too rambunctious on us. You can see right here, there's a grommet. And if you look up, you're gonna find three more. They progressively go up the luff of the sail. And the left of the sail is that edge that follows the mast. This first one is not something you would usually see on an old gaff rig sailboat. It's more of a, a modern kind of often racing thing. And what this does is it pulls down on the sail and it increases your left tension, which helps you sail to windward. And you don't really see it on old, older boats. Um, but they also weren't running tracks on older boats. So an old gaffer would have hoops or laces and at the top of the mast, there's nothing to stop the gaff from kind of swinging off. And you end up with this luff that has a curve at the top. There's just nothing you can do about it. But since ours is on a track and we have a modern design sail, we might as well try to get as much of that performance out of it as we can. So Robbie put in this point for the Cunningham and the reef points work the same way as the downhaul for the Cunningham. You've got a double block shackled to a pad eye screwed into our locust king plank. 
it ends with a jam cleat on the mast. And the same deal with the cleat and the pad eye. I've got to finish smoothing this out, put some finish on it, and tighten these screws up. Right now they're just tight enough to play with. And the other end is a fiddle block. Uh, so it just has a point to tie in at the bottom instead of another shiv. And then this also needs to be finished, but we've got a little loop of Dyneema and a Lignum Vitae, call it a dog bone. So this Lignum Vitae came from Joe the Machinist from back when he was making bearings for the hydro plants in Hoyoke. And he gave me that Lignum. I've hoarded it and I gave some to David, who was a regular volunteer, and David churned a few of these dog bones for me on the lathe. So this will get seized and wrapped and, and all nice and pretty eventually. But once the line's rigged here, you would take this dog bone, pass it through our butterfly knot on the line there, and now if we pull, We can use the jam cleat to stop it, and we can create incredible tension and pull down on that luff. Now I know when we hoist sail, we have the blang pin, we have the line, we have the block and tackle, but we can only physically get that sail and that luff so tight because we are lifting the entire weight of the sail up while we're trying to work that block and tackle. So this way we have a block and tackle and we're using gravity on our side because we're pulling down on the bottom of the sail. So that's why this can get us so much more tension. And if you watch that luff, I'll give this a bit of a tug and you should see it tighten up a little bit. None of these screws are totally final, so I'm not gonna pull on it real hard. You can see how this point has moved down and now we've got slack going to the pad eye, and this is pulling back and down on our sail, and that's getting this luff to be tighter and tighter. Let's put the first reef in. Make sure that point's right before we commit to carving into the boom. And this is real easy to come off. All right, so there's our first reef point. And then snug our halyard back up. All right, let's see if the aft end lines up where it's supposed to be. There's a grommet on the aft end of the sail as well. And what's gonna happen here is a line's gonna go around the boom through the grommet, back to the boom on a cheek block, and forward to a cleat. And that's how we'll put this one in. And before, I have them marked out from the measurements that Robbie gave me, but before I commit to making these flat spots, I wanna actually just kinda tug on this a little bit. All right, that seems, that seems pretty close. We need to make sure that this point is farther back than the sail, but we don't want it farther back than it has to be. So ideally when this is pulled tight, we want this grommet to be very close to just in front of where that cheek block is. And I think when that gets pulled tight, that looks about right to me. So if nothing else, we're a little farther back and that's better than too far forward. If it's too far forward, we'll never get the tension in the sail right. So that one seems okay. Let's drop down to the second reef and See where that comes forward. All right, that one. That seems pretty good as well. All right, check the last one. These are all looking decent. Yeah, that seems pretty good as well. All right, sweet. All right, 
One down, two to go. And get these all uh, flattened out and put some paint on it. And then we'll have to cut a slice in the stack pack here. And that reefing line will come through the stack pack around the cheek or turning block. And on down the boom. Hopefully the spruce just soaks that up and we can put on another coat before we leave today. When we set up for launch, we put the turnbuckle here at the bottom and what ends up happening is the slides on the sails stop here and the sail is laced to the boom here. So this section of sail is kind of always set no matter what we do and the sail ends up being up here somewhere and it's this pretty big bundle. So we're going to throw this turnbuckle up at the top and see if that works. I think we have enough room to accommodate it and still be able to fully set the staysail, uh, but we're going to switch it and find out. Alright, so up the mast I go and get these switched. Now, the only downside of the turnbuckle at the top, I gotta go back up there to tension it. <laughs> Steve has talked before about needing to switch out to larger slides on the staysail here, which has been difficult to raise due to the size of the wire. So about a month back, he brought the sheet to Doyle Sails and they helped him get the right size slide put on there. Oh, and this is the first time testing out these new, what are they called? Slides. Slides. Oh, this is going to be so much nicer. Oh, it's already a feel with a huge difference.
Well, I think that's uh, about all we have time for. I get packed up and hit the road. My uh, climbing line. Ah. It's probably the only sailboat out there with a climbing line to the mast, and it's not permanent. I'm going to take it down as soon as we finish up the rigging and stuff this spring and the last little bit of stuff. But I left it up because it just makes going up easy, and I don't have to do it on one of the halyards. <laughs> <laughs>